class. Today we're going to do um, some supplementary material. We're going to do uh, touch move events in conjunction with being able to dynamically CSS elements and we are going to be able to drag them across the screen. Okay. So the first thing I want you to do is uh, create a new folder. I made mine touch move. Uh, you can make it whatever you want. And I'm going to uh, take my notepad plus plus and I'm going to save it uh, save as and I'm going to save into my uh, folder touch move and save as index.html I'm going to create a, another um, another folder or another file rather and save as jQuery uh, JS. Let's open another and save as index.css. And our last one, I'm sorry, let's create one more. File, save as. And we are going to make a scripts.js. Okay? So once we have all four of these files, let's go to our index and let's put in our basic tags. We have our doc type. Alright. HTML head and let's link our jQuery and uh, CSS link relevance style sheet type text CSS href index.css and our JavaScript or our jQuery script type text JavaScript source jQuery JS and remember only jQuery gets linked in the head uh, or rather uh, external libraries get linked in the head uh, anything you do with jQuery needs to be linked at the bottom of your uh, page because uh, jQuery binds to either uh, classes or IDs or HTML elements rather and when it tries to bind uh, if it loads before the body loads it's trying to bind to elements that are not yet there so it won't work so uh, you know if you have one dot clink function uh, and you link it here in the head uh, it's not going to work because it's getting created before uh, the div ID of one's being created down here so it has to be created or linked after uh, your entire body so we should um, at the end, let's create our body HTML and our JavaScript. Okay, and there we go. So now that that's linked, um, let's go to jQuery.com. Download jQuery. And we want the compressed production 203. Copy. And paste into your jQuery.js. Okay, and uh, it should be linked. To test that, simply open your document in Chrome, right click, inspect element. You go to console. If there's no errors, uh, that means it's linked correctly. So if I type in the wrong word, it'll say that it can't find the script because it doesn't exist. Okay. Also, uh, this is good to see any JavaScript errors you might have. If you have a syntax error, uh, it will come up here. It's a great console. And if you go to the bottom right corner, which I want you to activate now, uh, there's a little cog. Just press the cog. It should say overrides uh, in the settings. Enable overrides if you're in the overrides tab. And then scroll down and you, you want to emulate touch events. So what this does is if we have a touch move or touch star or touch end function, uh, it will work here because 
it is now being emulated by Chrome. Okay. So what we're gonna do is and. Um, and we want to the next thing we're going to do is create a button so let's create a div id of button button and we're going to give it some basic styles first let's give our body in html their uh, basic styles height with 100% width 100% Heading zero, margin zero, okay, and then we have our button. And remember to do any sort of uh, animations or transitions or translations, we have to have position absolute applied to the element. Uh, top five pixels. This doesn't really matter. Left five pixels. Height 30, 40 pixels. Line height, and this is vertical alignment of text. Picks, uh, with 300 picks, text align center, and we want a background color of red, so we can see it, so let's refresh and see if it comes up, good, so it's there, okay, and let's just add a color of white, and font family, how about it? Font weight of font weight later, which makes our uh, oh, it doesn't work on Chrome, but it should make your uh, font light or thin. Or okay, so now we have our button. Uh, we are going to apply a touch move event because uh, we obviously want to be able to drag it. Okay. button on and our action is touch move function and uh, I'm not applying it to the body because if I drag my finger here and I have other elements I don't want to move my button I just want to move it if my finger starts moving when I'm on button already okay so we have button dot on touch move function and just to make sure it's working we are going to alert working. So let's refresh. Working. Okay, so just make sure your touch move events are working uh, and we're okay. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Refresh. Perfect. Okay. Um, now, HTML5 has a pretty cool um, touch move library to log the events or log our touch event on uh, the HTML document we simply create a variable variable touch equals and we have to add EVT here so I'll tell you what this is in a second EVT dot orig and all event dot touches zero okay Okay, so what this event is, is a function callback saying now an event has fired, our touch move event has fired. Within the event, uh, it has a bunch of um, options, and if you console.log the event, there's a bunch of um, callbacks. So what I'm looking for is the touch event and what my X and Y values are going to be. So this actually logs. Zero means that this is um, index zero or one finger. So if I put original attention to, that's my second finger etc etc okay so you can log up to five fingers obviously uh, variable touch is my event original event touch is zero uh, and within this there's touch X and touch Y which is uh, properties of this uh, uh, touch object okay so to access that we are gonna um, var X equals touch dot client x var y equals touch dot client y. Okay. 
Okay, and console.log x just to make sure it works. Okay, and if you see, uh, as I am moving, uh, my console is giving me my x value when I go back and forth. So it works, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is apply some CSS. So this is why we use uh, dynamic CSS, because uh, usually to change a style in an element, I would just use uh, adding a class. But this is why we use um, this is why I use um, jQuery CSS sometimes. So we are gonna uh, call this because my button is invoking the action and I want to apply some CSS to the button. So I'm not applying it to any other element. I'm not applying it to the body or div2 or div3. I'm applying it to this. I'm applying it to the element that invoked my touch move function. So I can call this. So that is this uh, at this time because this is calling touch move. Okay, so button as of right now is this, is the one who has uh, the power in this function. So this dot CSS and webkit dot webkit transform Translate 3D and use plus X plus Y plus and just give me a second plus Y plus zero. Okay, so we have our WebKit transform, translate 3D, so we could uh, apply X and Y values at the same time, and we don't have to define translate X and translate Y separately, uh, and this gives us better uh, 3D transforms, which is hardware accelerated on both phones and the computer, uh, so we add our variables, so we have, uh, we end the string, and we put plus our variable, which is X, which is our X axis value of our finger, plus we go back to string. Now we have to add our pixels, uh, otherwise it won't work. So we have how many uh, pixels in our X field, and we now apply our Y plus our uh, pixels, and 0 for Z, because we don't want to touch Z, we don't care about it. And we should save, and just in case you can't see, uh, this is how it should look. Okay, And once we refresh our screen, you should be able to uh, drag and drop your um, your element across the screen. Okay. So now one problem uh, we have um, our button is following me on the top left corner of the pay of the button, and I want it to uh, translate according to the middle of my finger, not at the edge. Okay. So to do this is pretty much basic math. We want to get uh, this dot height, which is our height. So variable height, which will get uh, buttons height. Var width equals this dot width. Okay, and we want to divide both by two because we're going to split the difference. And we want to uh, subtract minus width and minus height. And we are done. We have to bring it before our x because it doesn't know it exists yet unless uh, it's above it. Okay, and uh, it will now translate right in the middle. 
So what we did was we found the height and width of our button using jQuery's height and width functions. We divided it by two because if I uh, did height and width, I would just end up over here. And what I did was I translated it minus uh, the difference in half. So it would bring me, it would give me an offset of, let's say this was um, 40, 300 pixels wide. It gave me an offset of 100 pixel, 150 pixels to the left and it brought me down uh, 20 pixels and that's where my button will translate uh, in an offset okay and you could do uh, pretty much whatever you want uh, and play with it as much as you want but I'm just giving you a basic demo of how to uh, translate your uh, elements across the screen using your finger and make sure you don't use top or left because uh, it will lag on phones uh, you have to use translations when you um, move stuff across the screen on mobile. Okay? Thank you.